Welcome back everybody. Today's video, we're kind of going to just jump right into this and I tried building a budget PC that competes with the consoles. I really did try my best, hamstrung by, you know, not having an exactly giant budget and I tried doing this under the cost of an Xbox Series X or PS5 and the budget ended up being around 450 bucks and I did try my best and I think the results really did turn out very good. I'm very happy with this and I'm, I'm able to, you know, give this computer a good home at the end of this video and I'm super happy with how this turned out and we're just going to jump right in to the specs list. To start with, we I ended up going with a Core i3 13100F with a Gigabyte H610 motherboard uh, and a Gigabyte RX um, 6600 XT gaming OC uh, with a total of 8 gigabytes of RAM. The person I'm giving this computer to has an extra 8 gig stick lying around, so they're gonna they're gonna have 16 gigs. But for all the testing and for the budget purposes, I did end up going with 8 gigs because it was like 15 dollars and it was really cheap. So trying to maximize our budget where we can, we picked up this Cooler Master Master Box or whatever case off of Facebook Marketplace for like 20 bucks. It is in rough condition, came with some awesome stickers <laughs> on the case. Uh, and we totally did not entirely like the case, but there wasn't very many options in our local area. And he he's gonna end up just replacing the uh, acrylic side panel anyways with a different one that he has lying around that fit relatively good enough. So hopefully that would look better for him but for the again purposes of this video this is what what we ended up with and it's in pretty rough condition this is why I just absolutely despise acrylic side panels and this goes to show you should try to avoid them as at all costs because after a while they look bad they just look really really bad and for cooling I ended up going with a thermal right or thermal yeah, I think thermal right a pure Peerless Assassin uh, SE. Uh, it, this is cooler is super awesome, super budget friendly. It was 35 bucks, and we decided to go with aftermarket cooling, even though this is a i3, uh, because he wanted some room for upgradability, and especially now that you can upgrade to 14th generation when that comes out on this same chipset. So hopefully, like in a few years from now, when the i3 is starting to get a little bit long in the tooth and stuff. Uh, we can he can upgrade himself to like a, an, a 12th gen or a, a 14th generation like i5 i7 or something like that depending on his budget in the future would allow him so that's super awesome and he thinks that this is pretty much a, a, a good way to go and it helps that this thermorite cooler is so much quieter than the stock cooler that stock cooler I don't know what I don't know if we got a bad one but that fucker was so like whiny it was just like it was never not it was just a terrible experience and I this cooler's perfect though this peerless assassin awesome budget cooler performs fantastically dead silent all the time never saw the CPU get above 50 degrees so it's perfect the actual build process went pretty smoothly I'm fairly experienced when it comes to building computers, especially when, in this case, that it just has so much room for this tiny motherboard. So it was a fairly easy build experience, and overall, it, it went very smoothly. Uh, I didn't have, it was just me building this, I didn't have the, the, the client who's receiving this computer uh, present at the time, so they didn't get to assist me in the process. Moving on to the benchmarks of the system, it benchmark fairly well. I tried um, using games that I had that uh, have performance modes and stuff on the newer gen consoles. So uh, I tested Rainbow Six Siege and Tiny Tina's Wonderland, which both games have you know performance and quality modes on Series X and PS5, both being uh, 120 FPS in for Rainbow Six Siege on both consoles for their like their high performance mode. And for Tiny Tina's Wonderland, you could either choose between uh, 4K 60 FPS or 4K 30, and then 1080p 60 FPS uh, or something like that. Uh, and it it overall did fairly well. Uh, the benchmarks for 
Rainbow Six Siege did fairly well, averaging around like 240 FPS. And for Tiny Tina's, around 100 and something FPS. That's fairly decent. It's not exactly, you know, like what the the what I was hoping for, but if I wanted a more, you know, console accurate graphics card, their graphic performance is more similar to something like an RX 6700 or 6700 XT in terms of performance capabilities. And this 6600 XT, while not at just barely not enough to achieve that, I think this is fairly, you know, commensurate of like an Xbox Series S in terms of performance. So I think that is fairly impressive with how well this is doing and for how cheap I was able to get it. It's like smack, it puts itself like right in between the Series X and Series S in terms of performance. And I'm, I'm fairly happy with how that turned out. And with these benchmarks numbers uh, showing, uh, playing it uh, right now. I'm fairly happy with how the performance numbers ended up shaking out. I didn't get a chance to test this computer for Starfield because I already at this point have given it given it back to the client, but according to him that Starfield runs fairly okay on this d computer. It sees an average uh, on 1080p ultra settings uh, around like when you're just roaming the world, uh, like an average of 35 to 45 FPS. Which is okay. The Xbox Series X, I think, has it locked to 30 FPS at the moment, and they've talked about having a performance update coming, where you uh, can in hopefully see an increase in the average, you know, locked FPS, like they're started doing for Back for Blood I, or Redfall, one of those games that came out 30 FPS and claimed 60 FPS, and I. I think this game will get better with time. I honestly hope uh, the Starfield d does run better with time because at the moment you definitely need a higher end system to play this game, at least at higher FPS. And uh, what he ended up doing was just knocking it off of ultra to just high. And he did see a noticeable increase in terms of performance. He went from like 30s and 40s to like 50s, almost 60 FPS at high settings. So I think with time it should get better, it should get more stable and stuff. And so if you're curious on how it runs uh, Starfield, it runs okay, about as good as the Xbox Series S does. So that's good at the very least. So I think at the end of the day, this computer I built here is fairly decently in terms of performance and price, capable and very similar to the performance level you would expect out of an Xbox Series S and Series X. Like, it is so crazy how similar these compute, um, these consoles are to just being computers at this point, to the point where you look at the spec sheet for the Series X, it literally just is a Zen 3 CPU with a bunch of compute units from an AMD Radeon, you know, RDNA 2 graphics card. So it's like, if there isn't very much separating these things now, then like, cause like in the past with like an Xbox 360 and like a PS4, not PS4, PS3, they straight up just had this crazy gross AMD Jaguar, you know, multi-complex CPU and like GPU die thing. It was much more custom. And seeing that now is, look, looking back, that's crazy that they just didn't use off the shelf components. Like, they're not exactly doing that. It's still custom silicon that they're using in these consoles, but it's substantially more akin to in their architecture and their in their designs to just normal computers. And seeing how you can build a very similar computer today with to achieve very similar performance is actually very nice. And it makes it the whole game development process, I suspect, much easier going forward that there are so many graphics cards out there now that are so similar in terms of architecture for uh, game developers to design around. Cause like, it is just so cool seeing, you know, just basic AMD, you know, RDNA 2 graphics in these consoles and you can just buy the same thing for your PC. I think that is gonna be very game changing going forward as you see more of these next gen titles come out like Starfield that things that like Elder Scrolls 6 will probably be running on this the same hardware. So hopefully you should expect 
decent performance going forward because if you're buying the same graphics chips that are in the Xbox, presumably th those car those similar chips should last just as long as those the uh, consoles do. Sure, there'll be performance optimizations dedicated to the consoles, but hopefully that that some of that trickles down to the fact that if you're still using these older similar architecture cards in the future, you should still not be so hamstrung by the fact that your card is like five years old. And because it's very similar to an Xbox, you should perform like an Xbox, hopefully. At least crossing my fingers, that's what happens for this computer, because the client I built this computer for does not like upgrading their computer, and they, the computer that they're upgrading from was the first platform that of Intel's that had, I think, DDR4. So I think this was like sixth or fifth gen Intel processors. And it was rough. Like I, I am that computer, man. I wish I had it on me so I can, you know, get shots of it to show you what he's upgrading from. But he, it was like some weird sixth or fifth gen i5 or something like that with just an AM, AMD, uh, a Nvidia a GTX like 960 or a 970 so this is a much needed upgrade and I'm very happy with how it turned out and leave a comment down below like what do you think of the computer like would what, what have you done differently with 450 bucks would you have done a different graphics card different CPU and just leave a comment down below I'd be super interested to hear and what are your thoughts on the performance of some games like Starfield and Tiny Tina's on this computer I'd love to hear your thoughts down below Thanks for 300 subscribers. I forgot that we just hit 300 subscribers after uploading my previous video. So thank again for that. And don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. All that other social media garbage down below. And don't forget to have a wonderful day.